Sonny Bean was said to have been born in East Lothian, Scotland, during the late 15th or early 16th century. There is virtually no information on his background, except that his father worked as a ditch digger and hedge trimmer, and apparently Bean tried to learn the skills of the trade, but he had little success. He also worked tanning leather, but he soon realised that he disliked this line of work, or for that matter, any type of work at all. Bean met a woman called Agnes Douglas. Her nickname was Black, as she had a dark personality and was even suspected to be a witch. After marrying, they moved to the other side of Scotland and set up their home inside a Benin cave by Ballantry in Ayrshire. The cave was very imposing. It extended for a few hundred metres in length and it even had various side passages, making it a very large space. Furthermore, twice a day, during high tide, the entrance of the cave would be flooded, making the location even more secretive. With no money or work, Bean had no way of supporting himself or his wife. Instead of trying to find honest labour, he decided to rob innocent people. His strategy was simple, as he ambushed unsuspecting travellers on the lonely roads that were connected to nearby villages. With the items he stole, he would trade or sell them in order to obtain food or other goods. However, Bean was afraid that he could be identified as a thief if he let his victims live, so he proceeded to cold-heartedly murder them. But then he had another problem. First, he had to dispose of the bodies in a place where no one could find them, and secondly, he still needed to buy provisions from local shops, and as he was a shady character that lived away from society, it may raise suspicions. To solve both of these issues, he decided to bring the bodies back to the cave and butcher them. From now on, the couple's diet was mainly based on human meat. Despite the horrific nature of the diet, it was high in protein and managed to keep the couple relatively healthy. Over the years, Mrs. Bean gave birth to many children, all of which had an innate appetite for human flesh. Throughout the years, the Beans had a total of 14 children, 8 sons and 6 daughters. As the children grew older, they in turn had more children as a result of incest. After around 25 years, the Beans had 18 grandsons and 14 granddaughters. The nicknamed Bean Clan now had 48 members. For over two decades, the clan would live in the cave, only ever leaving to hunt. Over the years, they refined their skills of murder, as well as the cuisine of human meat. With the clan growing ever larger, they could no longer stick to hunting individuals. Because of this, they began to target small groups of people. The Sonny Bean Army would attack as many as half a dozen victims in military-style operations. These nightly slaughters were always successful. The corpses were carried back to the cave to be dismembered and eaten. Any leftovers were pickled in barrels and discarded body parts were thrown out to sea. This way, the remains would never be found and if they happened to wash up on a nearby beach, people would think that it was a doing of a wild animal, or so they hoped. Of course, with so many people disappearing, the villagers of nearby towns started to worry, yet they had no idea that those responsible for the murders were living so nearby. Well, the Bean clan had been extremely secretive up until now, and everyone who had encountered them had met their fate. Also, as they only attacked at night, there were no witnesses, so nobody knew of their existence. In light of the disappearances, local authorities established a missing persons list. Supposedly, it was the longest one ever produced to date. The mass searches were carried out to try and find those who had gone missing, or the culprits, but to no avail. During one search, a group of men made it to Benning Cave, but they decided not to go inside, as the group thought it impossible for human life to survive in such a place. The townspeople grew increasingly impatient. They began to lynch innocents, believing that they 
may have been guilty. But in spite of this, disappearances continued. Unfortunately for local innkeepers, they were frequently blamed, as they would usually be the last known people to see those who had gone missing alive. One fateful night, the Sonny Bean army ambushed a man and his wife as they were riding home from a nearby fair. The group quickly pulled the woman from her horse and muled her before she had any chance to escape. In an attempt to repel the attackers, the man rode his horse over various members of the Bean Clan, but as their numbers were so great, he too was wrestled to the ground. But he was skilled in combat, and managed to stand his ground by using his sword and firearm, despite being completely outnumbered. Fortunately, he held out long enough until a large group of fairgoers appeared behind him. The Sonny Bean army was at a numerical disadvantage, and so they retreated under the cover of the night. For the very first time, a man had survived encountering the Bean Clan, and the witnesses could back up his claim. Finally, the Bean's existence was known publicly. The man was taken for a local magistrate to declare what had happened to him. After hearing this tale, and combining it with the fact that there was a huge missing persons list in the area, the magistrate decided that the matter was of utmost importance. It wasn't long before King James VI of Scotland heard of the atrocities, and decided to lead a manhunt with an army of around 400 men, local volunteers, and several bloodhounds. This may have been the biggest manhunt the country had ever seen. Similar to the previous searches, separate groups covered ground all across the Ayrshire countryside and coastline, but like before, nothing was discovered. However, one of the dogs picked up a scent which led the group to a cave. They had finally made it to the Beans clan's residence, a previously overlooked cave in Benin Head. The troops were wary while entering the waterlogged cave. Their swords were drawn and they used torchlight to guide them. As they ventured deeper into the cave, the troops finally made it to the family's lair. They found themselves surrounded by human remains hanging from the wall like meat in a butcher shop. There were barrels filled with limbs and discarded bones from previous meals. In other parts of the cave, they found the possessions of the deceased victims, such as clothes and jewellery. What happened next is unknown. One version of the story claims that the troops retreated to the entrance and filled it with gunpowder. Due to this, all the beans died of suffocation. Nevertheless, the more widely accepted version states that after a brief fight, the 48 members of the Bean family were captured alive and marched off in chains to Tolbooth Jail in Edinburgh by the King himself. The crimes they had committed were considered so repugnant that they were seen as subhuman and thus didn't merit a trial. The whole family was sentenced to death. The next day, Sonny and his fellow men had their genitalia cut off and thrown into a fire. Then, their arms and legs were severed, and they were left to bleed to death, just as they had done to many of their victims. The women were forced to watch. Sonny Bean shouted, It isn't over. It will never be over. After watching the men die, the 21 women were burned alive at the stake, in the same fashion used for executing witches. In the town of Girvan, in South Ayrshire, there's also a legend about one of the Bean clan members. According to the tale, one of Sonny Bean's daughters managed to escape and settled in Girvan. Here, she tried to live a normal life and planted a dual tree that became known as the Hairy Tree. Yet, after her family's execution, the locals found out about her true identity. Because of this, she was hanged from the hairy tree that she had planted years before. Whether or not Sonny Bean really existed is up for debate. He is often considered a mythical figure, as there's no historical documents of the ongoing disappearances of hundreds of people, and his name isn't written until hundreds of years later. Furthermore, 
The exact date of the Beans clan's atrocities vary. Supposedly they occurred during the reign of James VI, but it's also claimed that Sonny Bean and his family lived centuries before. In medieval Scotland, cases of cannibalism weren't unknown, and Galloway was renowned as a very lawless place. It's unlikely that the legend of Sonny Bean occurred in the way that we know it today, but it's very possible that this tale was based in truth, but with the pass of time, the events were modified and exaggerated. The legend has inspired many songs, most famously, the ballad of Sonny Bean. Thanks everyone for watching this video on Sonny Bean and his clan. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. This was a recommendation by someone in the comments. So if you guys have any other recommendations, please do let me know via the comments or my email, which is in the description, as it really helps me to pick the next video or future videos. Anyway, that's all from me. I will see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.